I am a winner. I set my mind to do something, and I do it. Rob Schneider is an American comedy actor, writer, and producer. His career began with stand-up, continued on television and sketch shows, then rapidly went uphill in Hollywood, and now Rob is back to his roots. We'll tell you all about it in our video. Rob Schneider – What Became of the 2000s Comedy Star Robert Michael Schneider was born in San Francisco on October 31, 1963 and grew up in the neighboring suburb of Pacifica. His father, Marvin, worked as a real estate broker and his mother, Pilar, a former elementary school teacher, was a one-time member of the local school board. In the actor's family tree, the most different nationalities are mixed. Ancestors on the paternal line were Jewish immigrants from Ukraine and Russia, and on the maternal line were Filipinos and Americans of Scottish and English origin. Rob often plays with this mixing of bloods in his comic bits, as well as a bizarre combination of Judaism and Catholicism in his family. The comedian called his father the main humorist in the house, noting that his mother did not understand any of his jokes, but always laughed at the right time. The actor has an older brother and sister, John and April. As a matter of fact, he and his brother are not only friends but also partners in joint projects as John is the personal manager of our hero and the producer of his films. Rob was very shy and reserved in his early childhood, but it was his sense of humor that helped him overcome his shyness. Attending the prestigious Terra Nova High School as a teenager, he began composing funny skits for student events and soon began performing them himself. Rob's first opportunity to perform in front of a real audience was in high school. His older brother organized a band called Head On and Rob performed for them as a warm-up act. In 1982, the young man graduated from high school and went to San Francisco State University. At the same time, he worked as a radio host, and in the evenings, he warmed up for other comedians in the city clubs. In 1987, Schneider took part in the Dennis Miller Entertainment Show and won the HBO Young Comedians competition. Then he was noticed and invited to write jokes for the popular TV show Saturday Night Live on NBC. For that, Rob moved to Los Angeles in 1988, and soon the producers of the show offered him a few roles to play in the sketches. While working there, he met Adam Sandler, Chris Farley, David Spade, Chris Rock, and other popular comedians, who became his close friends and had a great influence on his creative formation. Meanwhile, there were changes in the young man's personal life. In 1988, he married the model London King, reportedly just three days after they met. The following year, they had a daughter, Tanner L. Schneider, now better known by her stage name L. King. The girl became a singer and was nominated three times for a Grammy. Soon after the birth of their daughter, the couple realized that they rushed the wedding and without waiting for the second anniversary, they ended the marriage. After the divorce, Rob was seen in a relationship with fellow actress Julia Sweeney. Meanwhile, the actor began acting in TV series and feature films such as Martians Go Home and Necessary Roughness. As for the most striking work of that period, it was the second part of the cult favorite Christmas comedy Home Alone 2 – Lost in New York, where Schneider got the role of the funny concierge at the Plaza Hotel owned by Donald Trump. Hey! Did you want me to put the key in the bag? Or did you just want to hang on to it? I'll hang on to it. Schneider then appeared in the comedy Surf Ninjas and The Beverly Hillbillies, and in 1994, he decided to leave Saturday Night Live. By that time, his salary per episode was $15,000, while at first it was $7,000. In 1995, the fantastic action movie Judge Dredd was released. The role of Prisoner Fergie was originally planned to be given to Joe Pesci, but he refused. Then, the main star, Sylvester Stallone, personally invited Rob Schneider. Critics did not like the film, but many viewers loved it. 
A year later, the actor's filmography was expanded with the films The Adventures of Pinocchio and Down Periscope, as well as an episode of the TV series Seinfeld and the comedy series Men Behaving Badly, his participation in which lasted several years. In addition, Rob founded his own charitable foundation that helped fund high schools in his hometown of Pacifica. Donations helped incorporate music instruction, pay teachers' salaries, and buy instruments and other equipment. Before Schneider's efforts, there had been no music lessons in the city school system for many years because of lack of funding. In the following years, Rob voiced several video games starring in the movies Demolition Man, Susan's Plan, Big Daddy, Muppets from Space, and also appeared in an episode of the series Ally McBeal. In 1998, the actor played in the film based on a script by Adam Sandler, The Water Boy, and it was the first time he uttered the line, You can do it. You can do it! You can do it all night long! It became Schneider's catchphrase. He repeated it in many of his films, and for many years, his fans have asked him to repeat it when they met the actor in person. The breakthrough in his career came in 1999, when the actor landed the lead role in the comedy Deuce Bigelow, Male Gigolo. In it, Schneider played a fish tank cleaner who became a professional gigolo. Women painted to give them pleasure. The small role of a woman in a Japanese restaurant whom his character takes for a client was played by the actor's mother, Pilar. Rob's daughter, Elle, also appeared in the film. In 2000, Rob starred in the movie Little Nicky, followed by another high-profile work in the comedy The Animal. In addition to playing a major role, Schneider acted as a screenwriter and was rewarded a million dollars. The film again featured Pilar Schneider as a neighbor, and a photo of the father of the actor can be seen in a newspaper article about the father of the protagonist. In general, the entire film is dedicated to the memory of Schneider Sr. Rob's character got his name, Marvin, and used his car on the set. That wasn't so bad. There is information online that in 2001, Rob Schneider got married for the second time to a girl named Helena. Allegedly, their marriage lasted about three years, but there is no confirmation of that. In 2002, the actor voiced the cartoon Crazy Eight Nights and also wrote the script and starred in the comedy The Hot Chick. Check out the sweet buns on that guy. Like to get my hands on those. And... Wish they were women's breasts and squeeze the hell out of them. Maybe put a stake on them. A film in which the coolest girl in school transforms into a simple male car mechanic was the beginning of a series of films in which a man and a woman switch bodies. Also, Rob, according to his tradition, entrusted one of the minor roles to his mother. Then Schneider's filmography was enriched by the films Around the World in 80 Days and 51st Dates starring Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore. It is worth noting that being close friends in real life, Sandler and Schneider worked on common projects a lot. Adam often acted as a producer of films starring Rob, and the latter wrote scripts for his friend. Another joint project between the two comedians was the crime comedy The Longest Yard, released in 2005. Then, viewers saw a sequel to Deuce Bigelow, which turned out to be much weaker than the original part and was nominated for the Golden Raspberry as the worst film. The film failed at the box office and got some unflattering reviews. In general, many of Schneider's works were recognized examples of vulgarity and bad taste, but the actor continually entered into controversy with film critics. For example, when the Los Angeles Times expert Patrick Goldstein wrote that Deuce Bigelow was not considered by the Oscar judges only because nobody had the foresight to invent a category for best running penis joke delivered by a third-rate comedian, Schneider responded by pointing out the lack of any awards for the author of the review. No such thing can be said of our man's other critic, Roger Ebert, for he is a Pulitzer Prize winner. Ebert explicitly stated that the sequel to the Gigolo comedy sucked. However, despite the conflict when the film critic fell seriously ill, Schneider sent a whole bunch of flowers with a note, your least favorite movie star, Rob Schneider. Ebert was deeply touched by his gesture and remarked that Rob was a good man and expressed his hope to see him in an interesting film someday. 
The actor himself explains the dislike of critics for his work by the general opinion that comedy is a low genre. For the same reason, in his opinion, comedy films don't get nominated for an Oscar. In 2006, Schneider took part in the voiceover of the animated film Sharkbait and starred in the films Grandma's Boy and The Benchwarmers. The latter was produced by Adam Sandler, who deliberately invited actor and comedian David Spade to star in the film in hopes of reconciling him and Rob after a spat some time ago. In 2007, Schneider made his directorial debut. He shot the comedy Big Stan and starred in it as a crooked real estate agent who was convicted of fraud and is preparing to go to jail. You see a new definition? My forearm. I think I see a new vein. I see a very sexy man. Rob was very responsible in his work because the shooting was held in a real prison, albeit a woman's one, and the consultant for stunts was one of the students of the legendary Bruce Lee. Schneider himself trained hard and even fainted several times from food poisoning and heatstroke, but the work did not stop. By tradition, one of the roles was played by the mother of our man, and the producer was his older brother, John. In the late 2000s, Schneider starred in such films as American Crude, You Don't Mess With the Zohan, Bedtime Stories, Wild Cherry, and American Virgin. They did not get much popularity, but Rob was not discouraged, and in 2010, he presented a directorial work, The Chosen One. Also playing the main role, he put on a deeper-than-usual character and revealed himself as a dramatic actor. However, this film was not highly appreciated either. Oh, thank God you're there. I've been Hi, Mom. trying to call you. Paul, I heard from your brother Neil. He is coming I know. tomorrow. Mom, I'm, I'm kind of in the middle of something right now. Well, we want to see you, Paul. Mom, I'm uh, can I call you back, Mom? In the same year, another joint comedy by Sandler and Schneider came out, Grown Ups. In it, Rob got a minor but very bright and memorable role. It was noticed by the Golden Raspberry critics once again, bestowing the actor with the nomination. This was his seventh nomination for the Anti Prize, including a victory for Deuce Bigelow European Gigolo and a special nomination for Worst Actor of the Decade. In 2011, Schneider married his longtime girlfriend, Mexican-born TV producer Patricia Azarcoya Arce. They met six years before the wedding on the set of one of the TV series and soon began dating. The ceremony took place in Mexico City, and then the newlyweds went on a honeymoon to Taiwan. A year later, they had a daughter, Miranda Scarlett, and in September 2016, her baby sister, Madeline Robbie. Then, Schneider started dubbing characters in animated movies such as Top Cat, Noah's Ark, The New Beginning, Dino Time, The Outback, The Reef 2 High Tide, The Frog Kingdom, Jungle Shuffle, Ozzy, and others. By the way, Rob possesses an excellent vocal range as he has about 50 parodies of celebrities and different characters under his belt. Also during that time, Rob starred in You May Not Kiss the Bride, Inappropriate Comedy, The Ridiculous Six, OMG I'm a Robot, and episodes of Inside Amy Schumer, as well as Hot in Cleveland. He also produced and played a central role in a series named after himself called Rob, which was released in 2012. In 2015, Schneider signed a contract with Netflix and launched the sitcom Real Rob based on the life of his family. Two seasons were filmed with Robert himself, his wife Patricia, and daughter Miranda as the main characters. The show was received by critics mostly negatively. Schneider's character was called unpleasant and unattractive, but Patricia's work was appreciated. They even said that with her comedic talent and wit, she eclipsed her husband. In fact, she subsequently starred in several films. In 2017, Rob Schneider appeared in the action film Life Outside and worked again with Adam Sandler, playing a friend of his character. Character. In the comedy Sandy Wexler, the comic actors also continued their collaboration in the comedy detective Hooby Halloween. Rob also played in the comedy The Wrong Missy, appearing in a small but striking role as a crippled captain, and also returned to stand-up comedy. He introduced a new special to the public, Asian Mama, Mexican Kids, a recording of which was released on Netflix. The show received mixed reviews, some appreciated the good and unpretentious jokes, while others found it lacking in energy and charisma. In 2021, Rob took part in the voiceover of the family comedy Pups Alone, which is based on the plot of the Christmas movie classic, but about dogs. More recently, the actor starred in Home Team, a film made famous by the return of Twilight werewolf Taylor Lautner to the screen. Hey, Connor Harlan, you guys up for some vegan ice cream? It tastes just like regular ice cream. 
As long as you've never eaten regular ice cream. Try it. Come on. In addition, Snyder continues stand-up performances with the new comedy special Daddy Daughter Trip. Another family project is at the stage of post-production, a comedy melodrama Love is Love. The actor also announced a sequel to the comedy The Animal. It is reported that he will also direct, write, and produce the future project, and shooting may begin this year. Rob Schneider's fortune is estimated by various sources at between $8 and $15 million, derived from acting, writing, stand-up performances, and entrepreneurship. In the mid-90s, along with his brother John, the actor owned a nightclub in San Francisco called DNA Lounge, which had a restaurant, seven bars, four dance floors, and a roomy lounge area with a huge stage. After a few years, the club had to be sold so they could focus on their family hotel and resort business. The actor has also participated several times in brand advertising campaigns. He was an official ambassador of the Taiwan Tourism Bureau, the Ten Ren Tea Company, and the American chain of home improvement stores. However, the cooperation with the insurance company State Farm did not work out. The commercial featuring Rob's character, a goofy office clerk from the 90s sketches, caused a negative reaction from the audience and was removed from the broadcast. The point is that the actor is against vaccinating children, which does not fit in with the mission of the insurance company. As a matter of fact, it's not just Schneider's attitude towards vaccinations that sets him apart from most of his colleagues in the field. He is one of the few Republicans in Hollywood having joined the party in 2013. However, the problems in the movie industry are the same for both Democrats and Republicans. The actor was not left out of the Me Too movement. He claims that in the early days of his career, he too was humiliated by a certain famous director, now deceased. Once in the same room with him, Rob had to crawl on all fours while he was winking at him. Therefore, Schneider is well aware of those actors and actresses who are forced to endure such abuse for the sake of their careers. The Schneiders live in California, in an upscale Los Angeles neighborhood. Their home was highlighted in the media in 2015 for an unpleasant incident. The mansion was burglarized while no one was in the house. Jewelry, a Cartier watch, and a very rare Willie Mays 1951 baseball card worth $175,000 were stolen. Rob is known for collecting old baseball cards, but the burglars didn't find his main collection. In addition to baseball cards, the actor collects retro furniture and vintage clothing. Schneider has a two-bedroom apartment in San Francisco where he stays when he travels to see the games of his favorite baseball team, the San Francisco Giants. He and his family also often come to Monterey, Patricia's hometown where their favorite soccer club, Tigres, is also based. In fact, thanks to his wife, Rob has become very involved in Mexican culture, especially food, and loves tacos and quesadillas. Rob used to own a 2,045-square-foot house in Los Angeles with a pool on the premises which he sold in 2004 for $1 million. In 2003, the actor paid nearly $2 million for a 4,700-square-foot home in Pasadena, California. The mansion, built in 1926, once hosted Winston Churchill during his visit to California, as evidenced by the politician's portrait. The house has four bedrooms, a large living room with a fireplace, and a recreation room in front of a large television screen, and the grounds include a swimming pool and a sporting golf lawn. This property was put up for sale in 2009 for $3.6 million, but didn't sell until 2012 for $2.3 million. The actor loves expensive cars, and the best in his garage is a silver Porsche Carrera 911 sports car identical to the one he drove in the movie Deuce Bigelow. Rob also has a two-seat convertible sports car and a Tesla. He bought the Elon Musk electric car despite his wife's doubts about its reliability. As it turned out, Patricia's fears were justified because once the car broke down right in the middle of the freeway and the police had to be called for help. Share in the comments, do you like actor Rob Schneider or do you agree with film critics who don't take his talent seriously? And whom do I have to thank for all this stuff? Me. Nobody else. Me. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.